Hello everyone, thanks to join this talk of analyzing the effect of crunch gain pattern on shoulder reaction force when working with the low limb exoskeleton robot. The reason that we did this research is because we found that different crunch gain pattern exist when people with spinal cord injury working with the low limb exoskeleton robot. And it is known to us that the shoulder reaction force is one of the main measurement index related to the crunch gain pattern. So we are trying to analyze the relationship between the crunch gain pattern exists when working with the low limb exoskeleton robot and its shoulder reaction force. I would like to start with the background. Spinal cord is a very important part of the human body and spinal cord injury can lead to loss of physical function below the injury level. In the world, there are millions of people are living with the spinal cord injury and they need to use wheelchairs to move around in their daily lives. As there are many inconveniences of the wheelchairs, lower limb exoskeleton robot was invented to help people with SEI to work again. However, most lower limb exoskeleton robots in the world right now require users to use crunches uh, to assist the balance during the working process. From the medical research, it has been observed that long term of crunch usage leads to shoulder injury. And this is because use the crunches generates an extra force load on the shoulder joint. And when the therapist is selecting the crunch gain pattern for the patients, they prefer a lower shoulder joint load crunch gain pattern. Uh, meanwhile, when people working with the lower limb exoskeleton robot, there are different crunch gains have been observed, which are the four-point parallel gain pattern and the four-point reciprocal gain pattern. To let you have a better understanding, I have two videos to show you here. So the first one is a parallel crunch gain pattern. The patients will uh, move the crunch at the same time when they do the working. And for reciprocal crunch gain pattern, the patients will move the crunch one side at a time during the working process. So this project is aims to test whether the different crunch gain pattern will affect the load of the shoulder. And to test this, we test the influence of crunch gain pattern on shoulder load using the Exoskeleton Robot X2. And this is the test platform we built up. In this tester platform, we have a customized crunch and an exoskeleton robot. So the customized crunch is instrumented with a trigger display and a force sensor. The trigger is for controlling the exoskeleton movement and display is for showing the current state and the next state of the movements of the exoskeleton robot. The force sensor is a six axis force torque sensor. It can measure three dimensional force and three dimensional torque uh, between the contact surface of the crunch and the ground. The exoskeleton robot is a Fourier intelligence X motors X2, but its ankle has been fixed in this experiment for better working performance. Three able-bodied people joined this research and they were first instructed on how to operate the exoskeleton robot. The exoskeleton was then adjusted to ensure joint alignment and a familiarization process was carried out before each formal experiment, allowing the participants to get familiar with the trigger usage and the two crunch gain patterns. This process will last as long as the user needed to feel comfortable. In the formal experiment, 24 steps of each crunch gain pattern will be recorded each subject and the sensor and external movement data will be recorded to the data collection system at 100 Hz. Before the formal data analysis, we did the data pre-process. In this data pre-process procedure, we first did the data segmentation uh, of each subject and each step. The reason that we separate the data into steps is because the exoskeleton robot is controlled by the trigger step by step and the data between the steps are eliminated in this research. Then we do the data normalization for the force data. At first we calculate the Euclidean norm of, of the three-dimensional force value and then we normalize this value by the body weight of the subject. 
Then we do the data filtering with a cubic smoothing spline method to reduce the noise in the data. Later, we propose three matrices for evaluating force influence, which are maximum force, maximum rate of loading, and force time integral. The maximum force represents the peak normalized force occurring during a given step, and the equation for calculating the maximum force is shown here. For maximum rate of loading, it represents the maximum positive derivative value of the occurring force during a step, and the calculation is like this. The reason that we only select the positive derivative value here is because we care more about the loading of the shoulder reaction force instead of the unloading situation. For force time integral, it is the total amount of force borne by the shoulder during a step, so it is a summation of the force value and shown here. To investigate the difference among three matrices, mentioned above, we use the Wilcoxon sign rec test to compare two crunch game patterns data uh, to find out if there are significant difference between them or not. And before we did the test, we separate the data into two groups, which are swing side group and the stand side group. The reason that we did this is because we found that when people are working with the exoskeleton robot, their body weight will shift from one side to another and at the left leg swing step their crunch force data are symmetrical to the right leg swing step. Here are the results of the Wilcoxon sign rank test. The results are plotted in three figures to separately show the result of the three matrices. The left one is the result of the maximum force and the middle one is the maximum rate of loading and the right one is the force time integral value. Meanwhile, the data is also separated into four subsets which represent the data uh, at the swing side of the parallel gain, swing side of the reciprocal gain, stand side of the parallel gain, and the stand side of the reciprocal gain. The data at the two crunch gain pattern at the swing side will be compared and the data at the two crunch gain pattern at the stand side will be compared to each other. If there are significant difference between the compared data, there will be stars plotted at the top of the compared data group. From the result, we can see that there are only significant difference at force time integral value. And for maximum force and maximum rate of loading, there is no significant difference. Which means the changing of the crunch game pattern may have a long-term influence to the shoulder reaction force instead of a short-term influence. And secondly, we can find that the different significance is higher at the stand side compared to the swing side. This may be because changing the crunch game pattern have higher influence on the stand side rather than the swing side. But we can also see that even though the difference is significant at the stand side uh, the metric value at the stand side is comparatively lower to the swing side. Meanwhile, from above, we know that the shoulder injury is from repetitive extra force load on the shoulder joint. Comparatively low force exerted on the shoulder will not be a main cause to the shoulder injury. Which means this changing the crunch game pattern may not be a dominating factor in leading to the shoulder injury. And here's our conclusion to future work. First, we can see that significant difference has been found at force time integral, but not across other two matrices. Which means changing the crunch game pattern may be a significant but not substantial effect to the shoulder reaction force. The results suggest that changing the crunch game pattern may not be a dominating factor in leading to shoulder injury. And our future work includes having more participants analyze measured biomechanical properties to estimate shoulder reaction force and explore the adjustment of exoskeleton movement for different crunch game patterns and may optimize trajectory planning to minimize shoulder reaction force. And thank you.